All right, let's start the recording. Check, check, one, two, three. Hey, everyone, what is up? My name is DJ Soto. I am the Bishop of Virtual Reality Church. We're a church that exists entirely in the metaverse. And welcome to episode one of I Don't Know What This Is. I was been thinking about this. Is this a docu-series, documentary? Maybe it's a podcast. I think it might end up just being a journal or a diary. See, I've had the privilege and the blessing to experience the story of Virtual Reality Church, and there's so many amazing things happening. And every time I'm, I'm, I'm experience, experiencing something or seeing something or hearing a story, I like, man, I got to capture this. So this is episode one. Maybe you can help me title this, define what this is. Some episodes might be just me talking to the camera, uh, sharing some thoughts. Maybe it'll, they'll be highly produced and with music and editing. I think each episode is going to be different. And the thing I think about is, you know, my wife and I, we've been on like BBC, CNN, Wired Magazine, and but we're only a, a small part of the story. There is this amazing community of talented individuals from all across the world. Um, they are avatars, but they are real people with real stories. And I need to capture these stories and the world needs to see what's going on because it surprises people when they look under the hood, they see that there's a lot of depth to virtual reality church. And so um, welcome to episode one of what this is. We're just going to start documenting things that are happening in our church. And so here we go. For today's episode, you're going to follow me to four different meetings I had. Sounds exciting, I know, but they're really cool. First one is with an inner city church planner named Myron, looking to do that for virtual reality. Um, we also I'm going to talk with a bunch of pastors who are in virtual reality or in the metaverse and about setting up like a fellowship network or a collaboration. Um, also going to be with my build team, see what they're up to. And then finally, there's a little hangout in Altspace for worship. So let's check it out. All right. I'm meeting up with a guy named Myron Pierce in Altspace. He wants to plant churches for virtual reality for the inner city. Dude, I'm excited about this. Hey. Hey, Myron. What's up, bro? How you doing, my man? Hey, good to see you, dude. <laughs> How you doing? Awesome, good man. Doing you good. Too, man. All right. Welcome, yeah, bro. Man. Welcome to the metaverse. Man, Glad you can make it. Yeah. Yeah, bro. It's been, uh, it's been, it's been, it's been fun. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good, it's man. Fun, man. All right. Well, I'm going to head yeah, over man. to our, um, to our church and then I'll invite you. So you should get an invite and then you just pop right in. Okay. And right. uh, we're here at VR Church, and Myron is a, a, a church planter, um, serial entrepreneur, yeah. and he connected with me. And so, Myron, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Yeah, man. Um, born and raised in inner city Omaha. Um, we, we've been planting churches um, for about a decade now. Um, first church I planted was when I got out the penitentiary and went back to the same hood I was a gangbanger in. And it just, man, God did an you know, amazing number. And so I've just kind of over the last decade been planting churches in the inner city. And that's really our heart, man, to, to saturate um, inner city in America with diverse Hopefield churches. And so we've just been on this, this journey of, of doing that. And so, I mean, consequently, post COVID-19, we're in the middle of COVID-19. We, you know, we, we've been planting churches, but, you know, it, with buildings closing, um, and me being a digital marketer and a church planter, um, since we've since COVID nineteen, I think we're up to like the last the last I counted, we're up to ten digital churches. Wow! Um, and a total of like twenty churches over the last um, like over the last uh, since two thousand and eight. And so when I came across your name, I thought, wow, like this is the next level of this is beyond digital church planting. You know, I just wrote a book called Digi Min Digital Ministry, and I'm like, oh my goodness, this is like, this is virtual is beyond it. Mm. And so my thought was, man, like, if 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 Soto's doing this, I wonder what it would look like to pioneer in the space of inner city, virtual inner cities, mm. and, and and how could we take the gospel further faster? And so that's why I reached out to you um because i just i just felt like this leading to just go for it man i've always been that kind of guy like i'm going i'm going you know i'm going to jump out 
and um, and, and fly and like you say, Billy, Billy Wild flying type of guy, mm-hmm. and uh, figure it out on the way, and, and tweak and go and tweak and go. And so since I mean our conversation, man, I've just kind of been blazed full, you know, full going going after this thing, man, and mm-hmm. and learning as much as I can. So that's kind of that's kind of where we're at. And what I was just really connecting to you because of your forward thinking and your forward energy. So there was this other church that was talking to one of my friends about launching a VR church in two years. And I'm like, two years. I was like, man, right. but you're talking about launching it right now. And I was like, all right, I got to, we got to right, connect. Yeah. We got to connect with Myron. So yeah. this is an unbelievable, I just, I love the story because you go from a prison uh, life sentence to now you're, you're planning churches. And not only that, right where that seems to kind of have people stop, you're still pushing into the future with virtual reality. It really is like, look at us, we're miles apart, but yet we're face to face. Hey, so, you know, you know, what's crazy. What's that? Is I was, I was watching. This is like freaky. I was watching this on YouTube as you were teaching it, right? Uh-huh. But now I'm inside. Like, it's, it's just crazy. Like, how you can be, you know what I mean? Like, how you can be spectating. Yeah. And then in it. You know what I mean? Like, it's different, right? It, it's a cold, totally it's different so, thing. It's so different. And I was thinking about, like, man, how cool would it be? Because, like, I literally tried to... uh to launch a VR church like a day or so ago, but I wanted to like learn how to build worlds and stuff. Because yeah, yeah. like, how cool, how cool would it be to like re- rebuild the jail cell I was in? And, oh, yeah. and, re- and rebuild the dope house I lived in and mm. rebuild like, and to take people like, when people like scripture says, we overcome by the, the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. How cool would it be to build worlds where people's testimonies can be like um, experienced <laughs> and then out of that, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. be able to share, okay, a next step for somebody. I'm really excited to see what Myron is going to do in virtual reality. It is going to be awesome. All right, off to our next meeting, going to VR Church headquarters to meet with several pastors about the VR ministry network. Let's go check it out. But I was trying to go for a clerical collar because I normally use like wear like a black on black clerical collar in my normal attire, but it just looks like I'm trying to <laughs> brown belt with the black shirt. It's yeah. all... um, guys, uh, thanks so much for uh, coming to, to our, our HQ, and really, um, you know, honestly, this is Jason's idea to kind of get together. So, Jason, if you had some thoughts, uh, definitely want to share. But I just wanted to give you my two cents um, real quick. Um, Aaron, what I was telling uh, Pastor Brock, Pastor Jason, uh, Pastor Jate, um, was that, you know, in the physical world, there was, I was part of a mega church. We planted a campus, in, you know, about 30 minutes away. And in that region, they were really reluctant to, you know, have this mega church come in, even though we were just a small campus. Um, but, you know, I started being a part of their fellowship. We created like a breakfast club. And I forgot exactly what it was. And it really was just a great like interaction for different ministries to have a fellowship uh, with each other. And I started thinking about that for virtual reality, because for the longest time, you know, VR Church was the, you know, the only ministry in VR. And then I was so pumped to hear Pastor Brock was was coming in, or was in the space actually for a while when when I met him. You know, for, it's been a good year, right, Pastor Brock? Or you coming yeah, up on a yeah, year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, it's probably before I like started doing like church services and stuff, it was probably maybe, yeah, I was in six months or something like that, yeah. Yeah, so I was so pumped to hear that. And thanks, bro. Um, and here's the thing for me, like, and I know we all represent different, you know, denominations, fellowships, back theological backgrounds. But I was, I really hope that as churches come into the space, maybe they can take a, a cue from our friendship, collaboration, and we're, you know, we're all doing unique ministry, and that has to be done, and it's so, so needed. You know, Pastor Brock's kind of seasoned in in here. Jason's getting started. Aaron's been doing some uh, life groups. Jate does the discord. And so it's just awesome. I love it, man. And um, it's really kind of in one sense in taking the pressure off to a certain degree, because uh, there's so much ministry that needs to be done in the metaverse. And 
Um, so it's there. There's no. Um, so yeah, man, there's a ton, and there's there's no stepping on any toes. Um, I don't know if it was you, Pastor Jason, or I forget who it was. They're like, well, can I get an alt space? You're already there. I was like, shoot, come on in. Um, I forget who it was. I was like, dude, there's just so much ministry to be had. Um, and so uh, what I was saying was, is I hope that we can create some type of, it can be official, it can be totally unofficial, some type of fellowship, some type of network, some type of thing where we can meet once a month. I, 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 oh, I, I, I thought you disconnected. I thought you disconnected. <laughs> Yeah, who you are, where you're from, and what are you doing currently doing in VR? Anything? Sure. Just go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm a, I'm a Lutheran pastor from Whitehall, Michigan, which is kind of an hour north of Grand Rapids, Michigan, and um, yeah. So I'm I'm a member of the I'm a ordained clergy person in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Uh, it's kind of conservative Lutheran. Um, I've been a pastor since 2013, and uh, yeah, just been on VR for for a little over a year or so. And just been building a community in there, but mostly in VR chat. I kind of bridged into alt space for a little bit, but I think I've got like, a, you know, a community in VR chat, and so I think I'm probably going to be focusing more there. But maybe, maybe when Horizons comes on and some of these other things, you know, maybe I'll branch out again. But yeah. uh, Pastor Aaron, man, tell us who you are. Where you from? Wearing shorts. You so yeah. ca so Southern California boy. I hear you. Yeah, living in uh, Southern California. So I've been in my role as an online pastor uh, at One and All Church here in uh, East L.A., uh, specifically the churches in San Dimas, California. Um, and uh, just found out about, well, I've, I've known about DJ for a while, but uh, through my seat that I get to sit in now, I actually had access to DJ. Um, but I uh, came across DJ through uh, kind of Jay Crandup. Uh, who's the online pastor at Saddleback, giving him a shout out, doing a couple interviews with him, uh, just exposing uh, VR Church. So I've known about VR Church for a while, uh, but just through YouTube videos uh, and seeing um, what all is possible uh, without having experienced it. Uh, and then there's another mutual friend that we have, uh, Nils Smith, who um, – is good friends with Nick Runyon, who sits on, on the board there at VR Church, or at least at one point did. Um, probably still does. Yeah, DJ's nodding. So, um, And Nils was like, hey, there's this uh, this church in, in California that I think would be a really interesting fit uh, to, to see. We're, we're just kind of exploring a couple different options, maybe uh, like bringing DJ on and, and saying, hey, uh, DJs are our, our virtual reality pastor, that kind of a thing, um, just with some situational stuff. But what we actually decided, which I think ended up being a much better idea, uh, at least for right now, um, was, hey, DJ, just get Aaron help uh, in, in entering the game kind of a deal. I think uh, the biggest encouragement that DJ has given me and, and my focus is making sure that I have a good grasp and understanding on what's going on with virtual reality so that when because uh, it, it, it's not an if question, it is a when question. When this uh, takes over, um, our church will be prepared uh, to to absorb that and adapt to that really quickly. Uh, Pastor Jason, man, good. this is your idea. Tell us who you are, what you've done, and then sorry if I took over, but what are your thoughts? Oh, no, you know I, I mean? this is perfect. <laughs> I'm, I'm just really thrilled to be here with you guys. I really love what you guys are saying. And so I, My name is uh, Pastor Jason, Jason Poli pastor up in Northern California, just, I remember, I don't, I wasn't really into VR at all. I knew of it, but I didn't really know much about it. And I, and I saw an article, I believe it was in Christian Day, a while ago, and Jay, you were the subject of the article. And I think they were addressing, I think you had a baptism, or I can't remember the details, but I was like, I was like, wow, that is, that is crazy and cool. <laughs> And I, and I know there's all kinds of perspectives. I'm sure, DJ, you probably heard the gamut of all the different perspectives on, on VR. And, uh, and I was like, man, you know, I don't want to be one of the naysayers. I'd, I'd rather actually go try it out and, and see what opportunities are out there. You know, I just want to be, in some ways, criminally scattering seed gospel as much as possible, wherever possible. And, and this is really, a, 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 now that I've gotten into VR, I've realized, man, what a, what a potential uh, for really getting the gospel out. So that's what I, I did in November or December. I think I got my first VR headset, started playing around, and, and I was just amazed at the relationships you could connect with people. Uh, as you guys already mentioned, Pastor Brock and Aaron, and stunning, 
So then uh, we've got about six people in our church, our in real life church in, in the Valley. We've got six people that do VR now. We were just talking, maybe, maybe we should get in there and start a church and just see what happens. So that's kind of what we did. Uh, we oh, didn't really, cool. Yeah, we didn't get going until uh, we didn't know, we really don't know what we're doing. And that's why I'm glad to be here with you guys to learn as much as possible, too, because I'm, I'm a noob for sure. And uh, but once the COVID-19 thing hit, it was kind of like a no brainer. All of us, we kind of been sitting on our hands and we're like, let's just do it. Yeah, yeah. we just jumped in. And we really didn't have much of a I know it's kind of embarrassing to say this, but we didn't have much of a strategy for a game plan. <laughs> we just got in there and now we got a little you know, that's a small community but it's it's been amazing i love what pastor brock said about the depth of relationships it really i, I wish more people who are naysayers out there would just jump in and try it because it, it really is stunning how quickly one lady who's in, uh, uh, in ohio and she started connecting the community and then you guys all have stories like this as well but just a person who's been put off by the church and far from God, but she just somehow stumbled across our church. Mm. And we've been having lengthy conversations with her and myself and another person in the church. And I really see her taking step towards Jesus. I know it doesn't seem, I know it might be silly for us to say, but we're in the same boat, man. Like our leadership team feels like we're building the plane and flying it at the same time. There's, there's no guide. <laughs> People are asking us for the model or the guidebook. And I'm like, man, you just, there is no guidebook. See me in six months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. And even six months ago, we're just at a different place than I thought we'd be. I don't, I don't know. So it's a long way, a long way of saying that there is no guidebook. You know, this is an uncharted territory and the, the canvas is blank. And as a matter of fact, what we're going through as a leadership team is we've probably replicated too much of the physical construct and God wants us to reimagine rather than replicate. And so we're trying to figure out what that means. We just all that's all we have. And we're trying to like dig into what that is and really evaluating like VR church. And so I think as we go through our reimagination, we're going to end up at a very beautiful space. Um, these guys might not know who you are, but Jade's got some cool stuff going on. Um, give us the lowdown, uh, yeah. my friend. Uh, so I'm Jade. Uh, I've been probably, uh, well, most of my life I've been in uh, the church and uh, I grew up going to church. Uh, my dad was a pastor. He started the church that I grew up in. Um, but through the turn of events, uh, a lot of, of bad stuff, I guess, happened. And, I, and I, I basically was like, well, yeah, I don't know. I'm not really feeling the whole church thing, um, at least not for like starting a, a church, like would have been the natural thing since my dad started the church. Um, but I was definitely never um, turned off on God. I did my own research and was like, you know, this makes the most sense to me logically. Um, and I uh, went to college and I got a degree in uh, digital art and design. Um, and through the through going to a lot of different churches, I ended up moving about 26 times. Um, I realized there's a, a very big difference uh, from one church to the other. And so I started to question kind of what is church? Um, what is the right kind of church? Uh, what is a... Um, yeah, Basically, through all of that, just realizing that church is uh, the people, um, that we are the church, uh, and that, that's really what's important. And um, so I I did end up working. Um, I've been working full time at the church I'm at now, which is uh, New Life Christian Church in Virginia. Um, I'll be working here about another month or two, and then I'll be switching to freelance so that I can spend more time with uh, our online church, uh, the mm -hmm. online community. So, yeah, yes. I... <laughs> I love yes, it. Yes, yes. This is our stash. That's the real thing, right? Yeah. So I, <laughs> I, <laughs> um, no, I just, I, I just, when you said that, I just envisioned something great coming. I don't know. It's just more of a general feel. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's how things start, man. You kind of take a yeah. step of faith, stop the job, oh, go freelance, all that big step, subconscious sure, I, anxiety, and then it breaks the breakthrough. Yeah, man. yeah. You know? It's, it's. I'm, I'm super excited. I. All right, next meeting is with the World Build Team. We're building some cool stuff in virtual reality. Going to go see what they're up to. And you got some ideas for him. Where is everybody? Hello. X28. Oh, now. Oh, fancy. Oh, I love it. Is everybody, anybody here? Oh, there you guys are. What's up? Who the shit? Run. <laughs> what do you mean, run? <laughs> a, new, a new code on. 
We're gonna oh. get sharks in the water, DJ. Dude, wait, hold on. This is looking nice. Let me start over here real quick. It yeah. feels good, man. This feels real good. This feels nice. Ooh, Captain Towler. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Captain right, Towler. Right, looks like you're holding it. <laughs> All right. <mate. laughs> Port huh. to sail. Something. Overstock. <laughs> What's that? Overstock. Yeah. Well, let's talk. That's one of the things I wanted to talk about. What do you guys think about about that? Because what we could do is we could copy and paste the scripture to a Google document, and I can send that to you without the numbers. Or do you think we should keep the numbers in there? No. Well, I liked your idea. It was initially a letter. Yeah. So it wouldn't have. He wouldn't have put numbers or whatever, and it, I think it'd be more original. And Lucas and I have kind of discussed maybe about taking those big scrolls and making it big and then putting the, the scripture in front of the scroll Ooh, so it looks like nice. it was a letter, but we weren't sure how the white letters, if we could change the font. Like the black. color? Yeah, yeah, to change the I scripture. Think so. so I guess what I'm thinking, I, I think my ultimate, like I like, it's the letter format, but I think the ultimate thing is I, I think it has helped people to remove the numbers, remove the little parentheses with like little footnotes because it's just a small thing, but I just know sometimes people stumble. They see a letter mm -hmm. as a part of the yeah. scripture. Is it not? What's this, you know, kids and stuff. yeah. So maybe what I'll do is I'll create a Google document, just put all the scripture in there, take out all the stuff. And then you can just copy and paste from the Google document. Um, and, and then, so that's my really my motivation for that. I think, so the other thing I was going to talk to you guys about was I'd love for it to feel um, like, I, I just wasn't sure what you guys were going to do, but this is actually exactly what I'm thinking, where it just feels like we're somewhere else. Because this is a, these are tough builds coming up where there isn't necessarily a geographic element to it. Um, it's a lot of like right. um, truths and spirituality, but I think you guys did a great job with it. All right, so that's about it, everyone. I think um, you know, listen, the the builds are just as much as a part of the sermon as the speaking sermon itself. So that's a really powerful uh, ministry what you guys are mm -hmm. doing, and it really. I just took a pastor in here earlier. Oh yeah, you met Myron. Uh, he was just blown yeah. away by it. I took him through the Acts twenty seven with the ship, and he just was. Uh, he just couldn't believe it. His brain was exploding. So, yeah, these this is really important. <laughs> yeah, he's okay. He went to the ER, got some stitches. He's going to be a two-week recovery. Yeah. All right, a couple times a month we have worship night in VR. And then the other weeks we have worship hangouts. So I'm going to go do this worship hangout here with my friends at VR Church. Oh, there it is. Let's go. Yeah, never uh, Rela oh, hey. like, hmm. oh, here. If you speak oh. about him, he will join. Yeah. Yes, I, I hear something. Video and how and how you had a snowball fight during Christmas or something? <laughs> snowball <laughs> fight. Break. Yeah, the first service yeah. I went to, it was like a break week over Christmas, and there was like <laughs> a snowball fight and fireworks and. <laughs> That's funny. How did you hear about it? Oh, through yeah. the Drumsy video. Drumsy video, yeah, and that's yeah. how I got into VR church. <laughs> that's awesome. It's, it's it was so hard to connect with the churches like in my hometown, like just because like there's no one, wasn't really anyone my age, which is difficult. Um, mm. But uh, like in VR church, there's people of all ages, right? And so and like like-minded people like. We all love technology. That's yeah. why we have VR headsets, right? So, <laughs> um, yeah, it helps. It, it helps for sure. Yeah.